Great Lakes Prepping here. Today's video is all about mashed potatoes and more specifically freezing mashed potatoes. Now there's a couple of schools of thought on the best way to freeze mashed potatoes and if you search for it online you're going to see a bit of a debate between the two different uh, sort of ideologies. The first is that you should only freeze the potatoes. Cook your potatoes, mash your potatoes, freeze them. They say that adding things like cream or butter is going to um, degrade the texture, uh, maybe make it uh, pasty or, or in some other way uh, non-palatable. The other school of thought says the exact opposite in that freezing just plain potatoes uh, can cause a grainy texture or for them to end up sort of pasty when you thaw them out and cook them. And adding fats like butter and cream or milk will actually sort of protect the potato um, and really allow it to retain its texture and flavor a little better. Now, I personally prefer to add the butter and cream into the potatoes before freezing because then it really is just a sort of a thaw out and eat meal. So in this video, I'm going to cook up a pretty big batch of mashed potatoes. And for most of them, I'm going to add uh, my cream and milk and even a couple of other ingredients for flavor. But I will set some aside and freeze them, uh, just the potatoes. And then I'm going to let everything sit in the freezer for a while, maybe a week or so. And then come back and do a little side-by-side -side sample. And uh, I know you won't be able to... Uh, taste it through the video, but the best I can do is kind of taste test it myself and describe uh, what I think is the difference between the two. So I'll try to move through this kind of quickly. And the first step is uh, really just to peel and cut up and boil a bunch of potatoes. But one last thing before we really get started, and that's to talk about what kind of potato to use. If you're gonna be freezing your potatoes, uh, something like a Yukon Gold or a lower starch potato is really gonna be ideal. Uh, compared to something like a russet, which has a higher starch content. When that freezes and rethaws, it's the, the higher starch potatoes are going to contribute to a more grainy texture. But since a lot of people swear that a uh, Yukon Gold is the best type of potato for mashed potatoes anyway, then that should be no problem. And so, of course, the first thing I have to do is wash and peel all these potatoes. And one last quick little note uh, about the potatoes. It's really going to be best if you use fresh potatoes. If you've had potatoes sitting in your uh, pantry or root cellar for quite some time and they're starting to get a little uh, mushy or, or, or otherwise just kind of old, they're, they're not going to work as well. They're going to end up being a little on the grainy side. Uh, compared to fresh potatoes. So try to use the freshest potatoes possible if you're going to be freezing. All right, 10 pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes washed, peeled. Now all I have to do is cut them up. I want to uh, maybe not quite dice them, but cut them into small chunks, of course, just like you're making mashed potatoes. You know how to make mashed potatoes. So just got to cut them up real quick and then we'll move on. And of course, we've got all the potatoes moved into a big stock pot, and we're gonna boil them. Again, just uh, making mashed potatoes like usual at this point. All right, potatoes are boiled and drained, and it's time to whip them. Now, ordinarily, I would uh, start adding butter and cream right now to uh, kind of help lubricate it as I whip them up. But again, it, uh, since I wanna uh, reserve some of these to make just plain mashed potatoes for the little experiment, I'm going to start mashing them up uh, right now without anything in it, and then I'll take some of them out. All right, I got some of these kind of at the top mashed up, so I'll scoop those off to put aside, and then I'll move on with the rest of them. Yeah, just a little bowl full, just enough to get a sample out of. Now, since this is a lot of potatoes, I'm going to throw a whole stick of butter in there. And for the cream, uh, it's always a little bit about fine-tuning it. And I'll start off with, I don't know, about, uh, we'll say a cup, and then do a little uh, more whipping, and then we'll see where we're at. I'll probably need to add a little more. That's looking pretty good, but I think I could still add just a little bit more cream.
And I don't think I'm going to add any garlic to this batch of mashed potatoes. Not that that's not delicious, but for this one, I think I'm just going to uh, add some chives and some salt and pepper. I've got this thing of fresh chives I need to use up anyway, and it's going to go great in those mashed potatoes. And we'll add, I don't know, uh, a couple tablespoons of kosher salt, give or take. And maybe about a tablespoon of black pepper. Well, that sure smells good. It makes me want to eat some of it right now, but it's not the point of this. So now really the next thing we have to do is get it in freezer bags and freeze it. But before I do that, I have to let this cool down. It's still piping hot and I can't try working with it and putting it in freezer bags like that. So, so it doesn't dry out. I'm going to put a tight fitting lid on that pot. And for our little sampling of just the plain mashed potatoes, which I already don't like that much. There are, you can already just tell that, that they're going to be mm, thick and pasty and well, flavorless. But anyway, I'll go ahead and put some plastic wrap over this bowl so it doesn't dry out anymore. And then after these cool, we'll come back and move on to the next step. All right, potatoes are cooled down and now it's time to start uh, putting them in some vacuum seal bags. And of course, I like to use the big rolls of vacuum seal bags so I can pick how big I want to make them. Just cut some off the roll, seal one end, fill it from the other end, and then I can vacuum seal it. And since there's not always a great way to get stuff into a vacuum seal bag, particularly when you're trying to put soft, mushy stuff into a soft, floppy bag, uh, for mashed potatoes, I actually find that the old ice cream scooper works really well. If it was a little bigger, I guess it would save a little more time, but I do like that I can just get a scoop and sort of carefully stick it into the bag without getting mashed potatoes all over the, you know, opening of the bag and just drop it in there. I'm sure I could do something pretty much the same way with a regular big old spoon, but as long as I have an ice cream scooper, I'm going to use it. And I'll just kind of fill this up till it seems like it's probably a, a good couple servings. And by the way, if you don't plan on actually vacuum sealing these, uh, but rather um, using something like uh, Tupperware or even Ziploc bags, um, you could definitely um, you know, freeze them a little bit on a cookie sheet, again, using an ice cream scoop or similar. Just freeze some blobs on a cookie sheet for just a couple hours until they get kind of hard. And then you can uh, load them up in a freezer bag or Tupperware and freeze the whole thing and they won't stick together too bad if they're already kind of frozen. But for me, I'm just putting them all into the vacuum seal bags, so I don't really need to worry about that. Now once it's in the bag, but before I seal it, I like to, you know, smush it a bit flat because then it's going to freeze that way, which then allows me to have a bunch of nice flat packages of mashed potatoes that I can stack up nicely in the freezer. I might have got a little too close to the opening on this one, but I'll just sort of squish it back a little bit so it'll fit into the, the machine okay. And we go. It's not a whole lot of air in these by the time you fill them up with mashed potatoes, so doesn't take a long time. And I'll just keep doing that for the rest of them until I've run out of mashed potatoes. And of course I can't forget our little bowl of the unbuttered, uncreamed, unseasoned potatoes. And these things are already pretty much just a chunk. See that? I can just pick that up with my hand. That's not going to be good. I mean even when I uh, reheat that, mix it with butter and cream. There's just no way that that's going to be as good as the uh, butter cream version. Now, let me point something out real quick. In the, the package that uh, had the kind of more hard chunk of potatoes, you can see that that vacuum sealer really sucked 
the air all around it and it, it looks pretty vacuum sealed and then the ones that uh, that were much more soft mashed potatoes you know you can see that it sucked the air out but it's not super duper tight and taut around it and that's perfectly fine it's just that um, the machine trying to suck air around stuff that is completely squishy and practically non-Newtonian uh, it's just it's not gonna suck it as tightly around um, you know the food that's in there and that's completely fine it's totally sealed the bag isn't gonna leak it's gonna freeze fine uh, it just might seem like there's still a little bit of air in there and that's that's not anything that I'm worrying about at all so yeah I just got to do the rest of the potatoes you can see I've still got quite a bit to go I'm going to get these labeled and stuck in the freezer. So there we have all 10 of our vacuum sealed bags of mashed potatoes, including the one that has nothing in it except potatoes. And uh, I'll go ahead and stick these all in the, uh, the freezer. And we're going to pick this video back up in, I don't know, a uh, couple weeks, a month, something like that. Can't promise that I won't eat one or two of these in the meantime, but... I'll save this guy here for our experiment uh, later on. So yeah, we'll jump forward and pick it up there. Okay, so it's been about four weeks and uh, as you can hear, these mashed potatoes are frozen absolutely solid. So what I'm gonna do from here is thaw these out and then heat them back up. So for this one, I'm gonna you know add a little bit of butter, cream, salt and pepper. Uh, and for this one, I'm not going to add anything, and that's, of course, the whole point of this experiment. Now, I'll mention that ordinarily when I take stuff out of the freezer to thaw, I just leave them in the uh, vacuum seal bags until they're thawed out. But for these mashed potatoes, I'm not going to do that. And the reason is because uh, due to the consistency of these mashed potatoes, once they thaw out, they're just going to completely stick to these plastic bags, and I'm going to end up uh, leaving half of them potatoes behind. I guess I could sit there and roll them and wring them out, but uh, it's going to be a lot easier for me to just cut them open while they're frozen and kind of just peel that bag right away. And there we go. One perfect rectangle of mashed potatoes. And I've got them sitting here in this baking dish just in case they release any water. It's not going to make a mess. And I'll cover this up with some plastic wrap and just stick it in the fridge for, I don't know, half a day, a day. We'll see how it goes. It'll take a little while for these to uh, thaw out and be nice and nice and soft. And then we can heat them up. So we'll pick it up there. All right, so it's been about a day and our potatoes are pretty well thawed out. And now I'm just going to take each sort of uh, sample here and put it into a bowl of course it's completely mushy now that it's thawed out so here we've got the pre-made with the cream and the butter and so forth and over here we've got just the potato and as you can see it really has held its shape a lot more uh, when I pick it up now I already know which one looks more appetizing to me but we're gonna give the experiment a fair shake and I'll heat both of them up in the microwave and then when this is good and hot, I'll add in some cream and butter, salt, pepper, and then we're gonna try it out. All right, here are the unmodified potatoes. We're gonna add a, about a tablespoon of butter, splash of cream, a little salt, pepper, and give everything a good stir. And I don't have any more chives, so this one's gonna just have to do without chives. And over here, we've got the completely pre-made potatoes. Just give them a good stir since they kind of got all packed together in the freezing and vacuum sealing process. I'll say that after adding the butter and cream, the consistency is about the same with both. This one on the right might seem a little softer just with the fork. Even though this is super hot right now, I'm going to give it a quick taste test. I'd say the one on the left, the, the taste is fine. Uh, 
the texture is okay. It's not grainy so much. Uh, I will say that it does have a little bit of a pastiness to it. Just a little teeny bit gummy. And now let me try the one on the right here, our pre-made. Yeah, again, the taste is good. Um, the texture, good. No graininess at all. And mm, I'm going to say that it doesn't have that tiny bit of sort of gumminess that the, that the one on the left has. So, you know, I've done these before, but not really in a side-by-side -side experiment. It's more like I used to do it this way, and nowadays I do it this way. And it's good for me to do a little refresher, even for myself, to kind of reinforce that I've been doing it the way that I like better um, kind of all along, or at least for the last little while. And I'm going to say that I prefer the pre-mixed a bit better. There must be something to the, uh, you know, the fats protecting the potatoes from, um, you know, sort of losing their um, texture or consistency, rather, uh, after being frozen. Uh, I, I don't have really a lot of complaints about the one on the left. If you're not as comfortable freezing butter and milk or butter and cream and you just like to freeze your raw ingredient, you could totally do it this way. Uh, for me, I think the pre-mixed butter and cream version comes out a little better. And you know what? It's a lot more convenient. I can do everything all in one go, freeze it, and I've got a truly sort of instant side dish just ready to go. I don't have to do any more work uh, by adding butter and cream later on. And by the way, if you do freeze your potatoes and thaw them out and they come out uh, too liquidy or too thin or maybe even... A little pasty. Uh, a quick tip is to just mix some instant potato flakes in with it. Of course that means you have to have potato flakes on hand, but a whole box of them costs like a dollar fifty. You can keep them in the pantry and uh, if they can save a batch of real mashed potatoes by thickening them up a little bit and sort of smoothing out that texture if it doesn't come out quite right from the freezer, then it's worthwhile to have some on hand. So that's it for now. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future food preservation and food experiment videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.